Never you in your life see yourself as enemy of God. Because when you begin to see yourself, oh, I have offended God, I have committed sin, I have killed God, I have functioned God, I have, I have this and that. Even when you don't have any evidence of what you have done, you begin to condemn yourself. That kind of condemnation can give the devil a chance to step into your life and rob you the blessing that God has prepared for you. Hallelujah. Many of us are always presenting before us. Ah, yesterday, as I was coming to church, uh, the conductor, the way he take match me, and I say, Holy Ghost fire. Mm, I have offended God. That is why market will not move today. Amen. God is not the what you think that he is. God is a spirit. He knows everything that happened in your life and why they happened. And we must come to a point where we know the God we are serving. Because you are knowing the God you are serving, we help you to go a long way to overcome your enemies. Because I'm seeing you overcoming your enemies. I'm seeing you overcoming your enemies. I'm seeing you overcoming the Satan. I am seeing you overcoming the attackers. I am seeing you overcoming the limitations. I am seeing you overcoming the setback. I am seeing you possessing your possessions. In the name of Jesus. Another thing you must know about God is that God can never grow tired. Amen. We believe that God is tired. And that is why God cannot answer some of our prayers. We believe that, oh, by now God should be resting. Let me allow God to rest. God is not a God that rests. When the Bible said in the book of Genesis that God created the heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested. The meaning of seventh day was that on the seventh day he did not create anything. Doesn't mean that God got tired and God was sleeping. No. On the seventh day was for him to adore himself. To bring a worship to himself. To bring glory of the things he has created. For the things he has created to bring glory to him. That was what happened. Praise God. And that thing you are seeing in the Bible is the order of creation and how creation is going and how creation has been created. It doesn't mean that God is tired or God is resting because he's weak or he's tired. No. God is not weak. Amen. God is not tired. If the doctor that is taking care of your body, the doctor that when you are sick, you go to, and the doctor is treating you or trying to, you know, administer some kind of treatment to you, and the doctor gets tired. It's not God that has gotten tired. Amen? If the doctor said your problem is unapproachable, is uh, 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 incurable, can never have any medical solution, does not mean that God does not have medical solution. God has his own spiritual solution. And spiritual solution will come to you. In the name of Jesus. If the market where you are doing your business is on lockdown. And nobody is doing business. Nothing is moving. And they say, oh, the market is locked up. Or people are no longer coming to the market. Or the business is no more moving there. Or the line where you are dealing. Or maybe you are into electronics. Or you are into accessories. Or you are into whatever you are into. If that line or that very particular business is no more moving doesn't mean that God does not have what is moving. Or God cannot make it move. Enough of condemnation to ourselves. Enough of limitations to ourselves. Enough of degrading to ourselves. Enough of bringing ourselves down and saying God is tired. God can never ever this world and the world to come to be tired. God can never be tired. God can never be tired. And God can never be weary. Another thing is that God is omniscient. God is what? Omniscient God. He knows everything. There is nothing about you that God doesn't know. 
There's nothing about your life that God doesn't know. The movement you took yesterday, the movement you took a week ago, the movement you took two weeks ago, where you went and where you go to, God knows all of them. You know, as we are sitting down here, there are some of us here, some people here that has visited Native Doctor this year. I can come and bring you out. Yeah? I'm a prophet of God. If I say, God, show me now, you will see the star will come on the person. God will say, this is the person. See the light here. I will tell you the date you went there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because God knows everything. And what made you to go to that native daughter? God knows it. The people that had problem this month or this year or people that went to maybe even prison or cell or whatever or had issues, even people that had an accident, God knows all of you. Whatever happened in your life, God knows it all. Amen? A sister walked up to me and they said, Major Prophet. I said, yes. He said, yes, sir. I have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, there's something I am trying to find out. Uh, one man of God now told me that the that this matter is from my so 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 uh, co wife, blah blah blah. As she was still speaking, the Lord opened his mouth, her mouth, her mouth opened. I said, What, what is this kind of display in the spirit? He was still talking, all the things he was saying to me, my ear blocked in the spirit. The Lord opened her mouth. The Lord took me from her house. That was the day I knew her house in the spirit. The Lord took me to her house and showed me the clothes she put on, the bag she carried, and the affair that she went to. And what they did and the sacrifice and everything. And she was landing with the message. I started smiling. I started laughing. As I was laughing, she was looking, ah, Daddy, what is the problem? I kept on laughing. He was like, ah, Daddy, tell me what happened now. What's the matter? What is this I'm saying? Are you not hearing all that I'm complaining? I laughed and laughed to a point. I said, Sister, say yes. I said, Don't deceive yourself. He said, Eh? I said, Don't deceive yourself. On so 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 day, where were you? Eh, I did my house. And after I go to my shop, I said, eh. By four o'clock in the evening, who was the woman that came to your shop and both of you went to a place right there in Badagri? And when you get to Badagri, where you people entered and the man and what he told you, is that what the man told you? You are now telling me one man of God? She started laughing. I said, hey, it's your turn to laugh. He said, yes. After laughing, I said, so what are you asking me? He said, I'm sorry. That is why I didn't want to listen to them. That's why I said I have a major prophet. Let me go to a major prophet. I said, be very careful. Don't joke with eh? God. Many of you have compounded your problem because of where you are entering. Be careful where you put your legs. Be very careful where you put your legs. It's not everything that glitter that is gold. You may not know this. You, may, you need to know. It's not everything that glitter that is eh? gold. Some things will glitter. You say, oh, look at the way the place, well decorated. The fan is blowing everywhere. I'm not even feeling the heat. Oh, AC is there. Every chair is already covered. Do you know what is under the chair? Be careful where you put your legs because God knows everything. There is nothing that is happening to a man that the man will say, oh, this thing happening to me. God doesn't know what to do. God has no solution. God is tired. God has fainted. God has nothing to do. I am tired because God is tired. No, God is never tired. God, as a matter of fact, is always ready to empower us. God is ready to give you strength for weakness. God is ready to levate those that trust in him. 
God is ready to put in you what will change the story of your family. God is ready to cause the light to shine in your life. God is ready to make you smile. God is ready to bring happiness to you. God is ready to make you to be the head and not the tail. God is ready to change all your story once in a while. God wants to make something that you yourself will be wondering, how did it happen? Do you think to make money is the most difficult thing? To make money is the simplest thing. In fact, as a prophet, I see money as the simplest thing to make. But the problem is that people don't have the power. Because to make money needs power. Either the power of knowledge or the power of physical strength. Physical strength. That is what make the truck pusher will say whether they like it or not. I will go and do the laborer. He will do the laborer and make maybe 1,000 naira a day or 1,500. Power of the intellectual is what makes people to sit down in one place and use Bible, write, write, or make a call, or say things, money enter. Amen? It's either you have the power to make it, or you don't have the power, and you begin to cry. You cry, you struggle when there's no power. Power comes to help you to get to where you need to get to. Somebody was talking with me and I, I met open the expenses in the church. When I met open the expenses in the church, he now began to wonder. He said, ah, if this is the expenses in the church, then how are you people running the church? Because no matter what we think comes in, almost all of them finish. What comes in a month, we finish it in a week. In the church. That somebody was wondering. How, how is the church going? I said the church is going by the hands of the Lord. Because the Lord has given the church the power to prevail. Amen. So what I'm saying this morning is that. God is never tired of your prayer. And God is ready to release in your life. The power to do exploit. You will do exploit. I said you will do exploit. You will do exploit. Things will turn around for you. The light of God will locate you. And then you begin to experience what you have never experienced before. Now he went ahead and said, Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. In other words, people can fall. There's nothing that can stop people from falling. People will be falling here and there. People will be struggling here and there. People can toil here and there. People can have limitation here and there. But the only guarantee that you can have, the only guarantee that you can have is what is called the guarantee of waiting upon the Lord. The guarantee of having confidence in God. The guarantee that you are a child of God. The guarantee that God is never tired. I have a God that Bible says, the God that will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. The God that I can do all things through him that strengthened me. The God that will make the way where there is no way. The God that will bring my health back, bring my life back, bring my destiny back, and bring everything that the enemy has taken from me back. Your confidence in him, your waiting upon him, your readiness for him to do what he needs to do in your life is what will guarantee your victory. It turns unfortunate. When I say unfortunate, I mean quite unfortunate. That what? Many people and thousands of people does not know the capability of God and what God can do. Or some people are not mindful of the things of the Spirit. Some people see the things of the Spirit as a wasting of time. 
Some people see the things of the spirit as a wasting of time or toiling or nothing, not important. Because when you place importance in the things of the spirit, you will wait upon the Lord. You will hear the voice of the Lord. You will receive the voice of the Lord. You will act on the voice of the Lord. And then the voice of the Lord will go ahead of you and begin to bring down whatever they have done, even in the secret. You know, you know one, one, one thing, one, sometimes when things happen, even myself, I begin to ask myself questions. I say, why are people not ready to hear the voice of the Lord or follow the instruction of God? Why are people always neglecting the voice of God or taking God for granted? And why are the people that are very close to assessing the Holy Spirit not ready to use the Holy Spirit and come out of their problem. Why? Why is it that people know the truth but they cannot embrace the truth? Why are people so, so very reluctant about the way that God has made for them? Many people are very reluctant about the way. They are not ready to follow. They are not ready to accept. They are not ready to embrace. They are not ready to allow God to take them up. Peter said, Jesus, if you are the Lord, let me come on top of the water. I want to walk on the water. And Jesus said, oh yeah, come. He came. Limitations in his life wanted to stop him. But he quickly cried and said, Father, please save me. And Jesus looked at him. He said, oh yeah. Be saved. And Peter was saved. <laughs> I'm not going